Hey everybody, today on Rado Runs Through, we're taking a sponsored look at Minos, Dawn of the Bronze Age. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make a rules goose, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, well then welcome to Ancient Crete, where we are competing to be the best at helping the Minoan society thrive and prosper. We're building up a big civilization and we're doing it with all kinds of cards and whatnot. Now I'm showing you how this works today in a two-player run through. I am the green player. Jen is the purple player. Although, if you'd like to get an idea of how the solo mode works, I'll be demoing that a little bit later on as well in the extended playthrough. So, uh, we're going to be covering everything today. And I've already got the game set up, which means each player had to draft between a, uh, comb a starting combination of unique special power. My special power is I get discounts when I play cards. Jen's special power is she makes points and gets discounts when she builds. So we had those plus these. These define what our starting situation is. And it went, ended up going this way. Jen has less money than me, but she has more weaponry. That's what this tile is. Uh, she has two extra starting resources. I only have one. Uh, I've got a few more points than her. And each of us drew a hand of seven cards, got rid of four of them, and um, we locked one of them in. So I've already done all of that before we get going. So in addition to this special power, I've got this special power, which says whenever I do a wild worker placement action, which is this symbol right here, I get more weaponry. And Jen, meanwhile, she locked the one in that says, hey, whenever I do the planning action, she could discard three cards to climb up the yellow progress track. So uh, th between that and that, we have got a very unique starting situation. Plus, we've got some cards in hand that are kept secret waiting to be played to give us even more bonuses and whatnot. So, we're set up, we're ready to go. A bunch of random cards are out there. We also have three randomly chosen objectives we're racing for. In this game, the first player to make it up to the top of the blue track gets 10 points. Three points for coming in second. Uh, whoever is the first to get three matching permanent resources get 10 points. And whoever is the first to um, lock in three matching bonus actions, which are these ones down here, gets 10 points. So we're racing for that stuff. We're trying to use these things. We're trying to get these played. Let's go. So what's the the process? Well, we're going to go through four rounds of gameplay, and each round starts out with us rolling all of these dice. Then we'll do some dice drafting, um, a worker placement style. Then, depending on what dice we draft, we get to move forward on one or maybe two, if we're lucky, of these progress tracks. The government one, the infrastructure one, and the military one. It's kind of weird the military-focused one is blue instead of red, but alrighty, so we get the chance to move up on them based on the dice we draft. And then, we use the dice we drafted in place to actually do various and sundry acts. Um, and then at the end of the round, we do some cleanup. At the end of the second and fourth round, we also do some mid-game scoring and whatnot. Or mid-game scoring at the end of the second round and in-game scoring at the end of the fourth round. We're over here in the first round. So let's get going. Let's roll, roll, roll. And by the way, I'm playing a two-player game right now, which means we had to tighten the board up. If I was playing three players, there would be um, more of Crete uh, to be able to control. And actually, in a four-player game, this entire board flips over to be an even uh, more populous world and all that kind of stuff. Also, these worker placement uh, spots change as well. In a two-player game, there's only two options for each action, whereas a three-player game, there's three. And again, you could flip the board over for a four-player game. Let's roll. Whee! Okay, so I've rolled, and now I've got to split these dice up by um, value, by pip value. That was a four and a four and a four and a five and a four. Lots of fours. Uh, there's another five and another four. Whoa. And a two and a five. Okay. So here is what we will be drafting. And we almost had to do a re-roll, as it reminds you right here. If there's at least six dice of the same result, re-roll everything. But there's only five fours. Okay. So 
I am the first player, and uh, I've got my little green clan up there. Let's go. What am I going to do? I'm going to take any one of these dice. I'm going to put them in one of my little dice trays to indicate that it's my die. And then I'm going to add it to one of these five actions, indicating that later on in the round, I will either do some planning or development, building, um, what's it called? Not conquering. Uh, expanding, or this wild action. And now remember, folks, I like doing the wild action because every time I do, I increase my military strength. So I might want to head over here, but more importantly, I need to decide what die am I going to grab. Uh, both what is the color of the die and what is the value of the die. And I think I'm not going to mess around. I'm going to jump right over here and grab this blue six. Why? Because remember, one of the objectives is climb as fast as I can to get to the top of the blue progress track. And so if I can monopolize uh, blue dice, I'm going to be able to climb that track faster. And so I've got, uh, now I've got to decide what of the five actions am I going to do? Or really there's four actions because the wild action means, hey, do any of the other ones, but don't do it as well. And this is where things start getting interesting um, because there is a prioritization scheme. The first time anybody places on a given zone, say I'm going to build or I'm going to be expanding, right? Let's say I'm going to do that. First time anybody does that, they take the leftmost space. And then if future players come along and draft, if, uh, you know, and decide to go to that space, if they have a lower value die, they push the player who came before into a weaker position and they take the stronger position. And by the same token, if somebody comes along with the same value die or a higher value die, they end up in the weaker position. So here's the deal. I know if I were to come over here, uh, normally the better version of this is do six expansion actions. There's a number six expansions. But if I come here and then um, either I or Jen come with a lower value die, I'll get bumped over here where I only get to do four expansion actions. But... I will get a consolation prize. I'll also get to advance on any of these tracks, whichever one I want. And remember, I'm eyeballing climbing that blue track as fast as I can. Now, I can't just come here. I've got to come here, and then I've got to get bumped. So, am I going to go for that? Well, I've got that same consideration on all of these actions. I'll be the first player there, but since I'm coming with a 6, chances are a 5, a 4, a 3, a 2, or a 1, if any of those go to the same spot, I will go to a weaker action. But it can be a weaker action with some side benefits. So, I think... I think, I think, I think, I'm going to come over here to the um, development action. This is the place where I get to play cards from my hand. You got to pay money, although you can get discounts if you have certain types of resources in your kingdom. Uh, you get one-time immediate bonus benefits off the cards, and then at a later date, you can potentially tuck them under your board to get ongoing abilities right? So I'm going to be setting myself up. If I end up in this space, there are three benefits I will get, which isn't great. Or three opportunities because I only start with two cards, but I am fully expecting Jen, or if Jen doesn't, I might bump myself over. So I come over here, which says, hey, I can only play one card, but again, I get to climb on any track. And you know the track I'm going to climb on, folks, is that blue track. So that was my first action. And now Jen is going to go through the same process. She's going to take one of hers. She can grab any of these, and she can go anywhere. And if she goes there with something other than a six, she'll bump me. Uh, and then this will be filled up. There will be no more opportunities to play cards because all those spaces are gone. So where is Jen going to go? What is she going to do? Well, you may recall, Jen tucked this under her board as part of setup. She wants to do, um, what do you call it? Uh, can't think of the word. The planning action, which is the action where you get to draw more cards. And this is saying, hey, after you're done doing the planning action, you draw your cards, you can discard uh, three cards from your hand to advance on the uh, infrastructure, the yellow track. And this is, happens every single time. Not when Jen places her die there, but when she activates her die. So she wants to take advantage of that. She wants to get more cards in hand so that she can get more um, free uh, you know, expansion. So she's thinking about heading over here, but she's got something to consider. If she ends up in the better spot, 
uh, because uh, you know you know she doesn't get bumped to the lower spot. She gets to draw four cards. One of them can be an era two card, much more powerful, and she gets a coin and she gets weaponry. If she gets bumped to the lower one, she only gets two. Plus, she gets one um, benefit, which every single time you play the game is randomly chosen. In this game, the benefit is draw another card. So hey, even if Jen doesn't take the best spot, she'll still get to draw three cards, but she'd rather draw four cards. So I mention all this because what Jen doesn't want to do is rush right over here with a high value die because chances are she'd get bumped into the lower spot and she wants that better spot. So uh, that's why it is worthwhile grabbing lower dice, uh, lower value dice, because you're more, you're less likely. I mean, if Jen comes here literally with a one, say like, uh, you know, there's only one we have, a one gray, then she is guaranteed to get the better spot because um, there's nothing I can do to bump her. I'd have to have a zero pip die, which doesn't exist, to bump her. And then she's guaranteed got the best space. But she took a lower value die. And there's a downside to that. Remember I said... Um, after we've taken placed all our dice, but before we actually do the dice, we have the potential to advance on these progress tracks. The way that works is we will tally up the value of all the dice in the in the three different colors, and if the total value of the dice um, are nine or greater, we get to advance. That's why I took that six uh, that's blue, because I'm planning for my next die to either be the blue five or the blue four, because the blue six plus either of these blues will be greater than nine, which means I'll get a free step up on the, um, you know, the strength, the military track, and I'll get the bonus of getting two more military units I can deploy around on the board. That's a pretty big deal. If Jen is taking a gray one, that's not going to push very far to help her move up any of these tracks. It still can. Say Jen ultimately ends up placing this red six. She could add the six plus the gray, which is colorless. So that's seven. And then... Um, you know, if she had this gray three, these three things combined would total nine or more red. So she'd get to move up on the red track and get some instant money as an example. So there is definitely a reason to take high value dice so that you have a better shot at moving up these tracks, but you want those low value dice so that you can get the better spaces. So is Jen going to do that and lock in the best um, planning action she can? Well, if she wants to hedge her bets, she could say, come over here with the three instead, right? She could go with that. Then, but that means either of these dice, if I take either of them, then she's going to get bumped. But what have I just shown? I'm trying to do blue. Jen's thinking, hey, I probably wouldn't push the yellow agenda because uh, in a perfect world of the four dice you place, if you can work it out so that you've got nine or greater in two colors or one color twice, you could move up two spaces. So, um, I mean, so it's possible that if my next one is a red six and then for my second and third, I take the gray four and the gray three, then um, I'd be able to move up on the blue and the red. On the flip side, if I get all three of these blue dice uh, and then I just get one medium level red, I'd have enough to move up two on the blue. So these are big considerations. Hey, what's going to get you access to the better actions of what you want to do, but also what's going to let you move up these tracks? There's another consideration as well that has to do with the pips. I'll talk about that in a little bit though, because I feel like I'm overwhelming you and I should make a choice on Jen's behalf. So anyway, what is she going to do? I think Jen doesn't want to mess around. She wants to lock in to take advantage of her special ability of being able to, you know, this gets her get four cards. And if she discards three of them, she can start climbing up this track for free without having to hit the big magic nine. All right. So now it's my turn. I'm going to grab my second die. And Jen has left it wide open for me. I'm going to see if I can move up two on the blue. I'm going to take a blue five. And again, by taking these high value dice, I am definitely restricting what options I've got available to myself. So if I wanted to plan, which is the get more cards, well, it's higher than the one. So I'd have to take the weaker spot, but it's still not a bad spot. But remember, one of the things I want to do is come over to the wild spot because my special power is I get an extra military token, uh, strength token, uh, weaponry token, I think they're called, every time I go here. So maybe I should go here. 
Now, again, I'm probably going to get bumped into the worst spot. Although, it's arguable whether it's worse because if I take the best the best spot, I get to do two wild actions. I get to pick one of the other types of things and do two actions of it. If I get bumped down, I only get to do one action, but I also get this. And there's a bunch of these that come with the game, so every time you play, you're going to get a different one of these standard bonus actions. So honestly, I don't mind getting bumped down. All right, and now I'm on my way to trying to get 18 total blue points if I can get lucky and snag that four blue and that four or five gray, I could pull it off. And now it is Jen's turn, and she's got some more dice to take. What does she like? Well, I mean, Jen can see what I'm going for. So she could go on ahead and grab that blue four, thereby, you know, um, squashing my chances and moving up really far on the blue. Because she can see, hey, there's a reward for blue. But um, if she were to get this, this would be four plus one is five, which means she'd need another four, which if she can get a couple of grays, she could pull it off. So she can move up on the blue as well. But, 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 I think instead Jen's going to go for the gray five. All righty. And where is she going to go? She's going to come over here. Bloop. Or no, wait, is she? Is she? Is she? So, by doing this, she has bumped me into the lower. So, she gets the chance to play three cards. Here's the problem, though, folks. When she activates this, she's got to have three cards, and she has to be able to afford them to get them into play, to take most advantage of that zone. The problem with going for that is, right now, she's only got two cards. So, she would need to come do this action and get some more cards before she does this action. Here's the trick. Remember I said there was another thing to take into account when you're picking um, dice and their pips value? When we start, when we get to the second half of the round where we're actually performing actions, we have to perform them our highest value die first. And since this is a five and this is a one, Jen would have to do this, play three cards. Before she would do that, draw four cards. So actually, that is not really a great series for Jen to do. She's mostly thinking about grabbing that... Um, to take the better spot, but the I mean, she wants to do this before she does that for an ideal resolution, and it won't work that way. So, what is she going to do instead? Hmm. Well, she does need to be thinking about moving up on tracks as well. She already knows she's going to move up one on the yellow track, and she's pretty happy about that because when she does, this space says, hey, she gets a permanent resource. She already started with a wood, and she and this will be random. She doesn't know what she's going to get, but if she gets lucky and gets another wood, she'll be two-thirds of the way towards completing this, having three matching resources. So, um, she's kind of, she knows she's going to advance on that. She'd like to advance on one of the other ones as well. Is she going to try to chase after the blue, thereby stopping me from going blue twice? Uh, you know, there are 10 points on offer. So, okay, she'll, she'll change her mind. She'll, she's going to go for the blue, thereby eliminating my shot, right? Uh, if I could get the five and the four, that would be... Um, no, actually, I could still do it. Uh, you know, the five plus the five is nine. The four plus the six is ten. So I could still do it if I get both of those grays. But I got to get both of them if I want to move up on the blue track twice. But in the meantime, Jen is going to put this four someplace. And what is she going to do? Um, she could still do this. But again, she'd have the same problem. She went with such a low. I don't think she's going to try and um, play cards at all this turn. She's actually coming here to get cards. And then she's going to trash them to get progress. So it might make more sense. Although, you know, it does make sense. If she's coming here to trash cards, maybe she wants to come here again and get more cards. What if she does this? What if she visits the spot she's already on? Um, now, remember, if she had a zero pip, she'd push herself over, but there's no such thing. So since she is equal to or higher than what's already there, she takes the worst spot. And now, Jen is going to be able to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards to add to her hand, which is going to make it much more attractive to her to start trashing cards to get advancement. And I left that wide open. Jen's going to get to do that twice, and she's going to have a huge hand of cards. All righty. Now it is time for me to take my third die. All right. And so Jen took the other blue. So now I'm doubling back, trying to ensure that I can still get my double blue. So I'll take this because uh, colorless... Four plus a blue five, that equals blue nine. That's a step up. So I'm going to take this, and where do I go? And, okay, I can't come here. If I go here, I'll have both of these. If I come here, 
I'll have both of these. And that makes sense to me because remember, every time I do the wild action, my special power kicks in. So there we go. Now it is Jen's turn. And if Jen doesn't take that gray five, she knows I'm going to go up twice on blue. And she is not crazy about that. So she's going to take it. And I'm like, no, no. Because now Jen's four plus her five is getting, now we're going to be tied moving up the blue. All right. So what is Jen going to do with this five? Hmm. I think Jen is going to be the first to try to, um, oh, uh, spread or expand. I mean, uh, starting from where she is, get more of her units on the board and have them move around to start trying to fight the sea people or give us the opportunity to build in other regions and stuff like that. So that was it. And you know, I knew it was a long shot and Jen has stymied me. So what is my last die going to be? Um, the gray three won't do it, right? But no, it will. Oh, it will. I'm totally fine. The gray three works. I still get to move up my two blue. Okay. I can do math. Three plus six is nine. And five is right. So anyway, so here's my last one. What am I going to do? Um, I could also start trying to spread my troops. I could try to play even more cards, but I already don't have enough cards to play. So I don't think that makes much sense. Do I be the first to try to build? Well, normally... It costs a lot of money to play cards, and I've been frozen out. I'm not going to get to play any cards this round. So if I'm going to have a bunch of cash on hand, maybe I want to start spending it to build some more stuff. That might make sense. All right. But if I do that, then I do not have the opportunity to, um, to move out, to, to spread my forces. Because the more I get my forces on the board, I've got three queued up waiting to go right here. And if I can get them out on the board and I'm going to do a triple build, I'll have more access to stuff. And on the flip side, I could say, hey, I'm just going to bump Jen. And now I get to do um, six expansion actions and Jen only gets to do four, but Jen gets to move up on a track. And at this point, because we're racing on that blue, I kind of don't want Jen to have access to that. I am not going to bump her and give her that. Because this is almost a better thing right now. So, oh, here's another thing I could do. I could come over here, bump myself. Then I'm set up to play four cards, which makes no sense. But here's the deal. Whenever you go to an action, if you can't or don't want to do it, because maybe you got bumped into a thing you didn't want to do or things went out of order or whatever, instead of doing that action, you can just make money. You can always get two coins. So I could be, hey, get two coins, but then move up a track and play one card. But then I'm not building anything. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, play one card. And Jen won't be playing any cards, but she's just getting a bunch of cards and then trashing them. Now, one thing I can't do is this. And remember, I'm going to do this twice. This is going to let me do three wild actions. Um, which means I do still have the opportunity to get more cards if I want to. And coming over here lets me, you know, I, I'm monopolizing this, and that's going to let me move up on the blue track even further and faster. Let's go for that. That was my last shot, and now it's Jen's last shot. She has a few dice left. So, Jen uh, now has an interesting choice. And uh, let's see. So, she's got the gray five. That could let her go up on the blue track. But if she gets um, you know, any of these fours, those could let her go up the red or the yellow track instead. Right? And uh, you know, she should be thinking about, hey, if we go up the blue track, we just get more units. And now, strictly speaking, Jen does want to get more units because she's currently going to be doing a huge expansion action. And um, having more units means she could do it more powerfully. But instead, if she chooses to get one of these yellows or reds so that it can combine with the gray to go up on the red or the yellow track, she could get more money, which we desperately need all throughout the game. Or, again, well, she's already planning on moving up one step on uh, this by trashing some cards. If she goes up on the yellow, she can move up a second step and that would let her upgrade her special power. That's what this thing is right here. Which means every time she builds, she gets two points and a monetary discount on building as opposed to only two points. I mean, so Jen's special power is building. And she could start building now, but she wouldn't be using it to full effect. If she pulls an audible, which I think is what she's going to do, 
She kept the. She tried to keep getting a, a you know a double blue for me, but she couldn't. So she's gonna grab this yellow so that she can go up twice on the yellow track ultimately. Um, so that she can upgrade this before she starts building, so it's a more powerful bonus for building, right? Because so far she's not building at all. Although, although she could start building. Yeah, you know what? Let's do it. Let's say this is the last action. Although, if Jen does this. She'd be bumping herself. She'd then have 10 expansion actions, which is way more than she needs. But still, it could come in handy. She'd find a way to use them, although she could also just get points instead. But more importantly, she'd climb up another track. She, she could actually make it all the way to the third level of the yellow track, which means she'd get a free build action as well. Instead of coming over here to get three builds, she can come over here to climb higher on this track and get one build and get closer to the higher, bigger, more um, you know impactful bonuses. I think she kind of likes that. I think she kind of does. Um, because if she makes it up this far in the yellow, this lets her get another permanent resource, but she gets to choose instead of random. And the quicker she can get three lumber, because she started with a lumber, if she gets two more, she can unlock that. She could say, hey, chase after the blue. I don't care. I'm not going to fight you on that because I'm going to come in first on this. And then there's also this one. And the best way to work that one is to climb up this track, of course. Um, because this lets her um, increase her power to tuck cards. But Jen doesn't know if she wants to be chasing after tucking cards right now because she's got this power to burn cards instead of tucking them. I think this makes sense. I think so. I think so. Okay, boom. We are done. We have finished the first round's drafting and placing of dice. And things got shuffled around, etc., etc. And now we advance on the uh, the government, the infrastructure, or the military tract if we've got one or more grouping of dice that total nine or better. And I'm going to go up blue twice because I've got this four plus this um, five, so that's nine total for blue. And I've got this six plus this four, so that is ten total for blue. So I go a bippity bop. I immediately, for hitting that spot, unlock two more of my military units. So I've got and this spot does not get me anything immediately, but instead increases the income I will get at the end of the round. Jen stuck at this income level, I've gone to this income level. All right. And so I went up twice on blue and I'm getting closer to winning that 10 points. Jen meanwhile says, "Hey, what have I got? I've got um you're looking at her purples. She's got a yellow 4 um plus a 5 plus a 4 plus a 1." So all that told means she's got um, she went over nine in the yellow color once. So she is going to move up once, and she's going to get a random. Fingers crossed. She's hoping for more lumber, but she'll be happy with anything. Let's see what she gets. She has got just told randomly. Okay, she's got some food. All right, so. Not what she was hoping for, but again, you can't complain. Jen now, permanently, for the rest of the game, has on hand one supply of lumber and one supply of grain. And these will help her throughout the game in lots of different ways. She also has a temporary um, silver and herbs. Those will help her too, but these are one and done. These she can use over and over and over again. Plus, there's another bonus. If we zoom in on a player board here, you can see there's a reminder that whenever we get more permanent resources, we move up on the population track because the population grows because we have more resources. So the first time you get a new, if it's not equal to what you already have, you move up one step. So Jen has just increased her income for the end of the round from four coins to four coins plus one point. If Jen had actually gotten lucky and gotten lumber, it would have been a matching one, which would have moved her two. A third of a kind moves her up one and gets her a level two um, you know, decree card and so on. So anyway, so Jen moved up, got that benefit. This is going to come in handy later, uh, along with all of her other resources, her money, her military, which, man, I haven't even talked about this yet, folks. Oh, man, there's so much that goes on in this game. But anyway, so uh, that was how Jen's tallied up. And now... We have finished advancing based on the dice we chose, and now we start taking actions. I'm the first player, and of all my dice, the green ones out there, I have to activate the highest value one, uh, which is going to be that. Then Jen will activate her highest value, which will be this. Then I'll do mine and so on. So we kind of do a countdown. So the order you resolve stuff is hugely um, influential here. So this is my first one. I'm going to take this. Uh, that was my six I used. 
Uh, the number does not matter anymore, other than the fact that it's the order I'm doing. And uh, a couple things happen. I get to move one up on any track I want, and I get to grab one... No, I'm sorry. I don't get to grab a card. I get to play a card. Let's move up on a track first. And this one says anything. You know what I'm doing. I'm just keeping on pushing up my blue agenda. And hey, I just got two more weaponry tiles. So Jen started with more, but now I've got more than her. These are incredibly valuable, important resources uh, for reasons I think you're about to see. Because I've activated that. I look over here, by the way. Have I done anything to trigger my tucked benefits? Nope. This is when I do wilds, I get more military. So when I activate these dice, this power will happen as well. But we'll worry about that in a bit. In the meantime, I am now going to play one card. Uh, and I've got two to choose from. All righty. And I got to say, folks, this is a tough choice. Uh, let's break these cards down. This would cost me seven coins, but I get a discount for copper. And it just so happens, remember, as part of setup, I have one permanent copper source. The reason I had this as part of setup off of my um, you know, setup card is one of the reasons I kept this card in my hand. Because I knew since I had copper, and by the way, I also had a temporary food, I would get a $3. So this only cost me four coins instead of seven. It's worth four points at the end of the game if I get it into my palace, i.e. if I tuck it, which I've already done with this card over here. So it's worth four points, whereas this one's only worth three points at the end of the game. This one costs more. This one costs less. This one costs eight, minus three if I've got any silver. Now, here's a problem. I don't have any silver. I've got copper. I've got food. But I do have silver. Remember, folks, this is the home of my Minoan clan up here. This is my capital. I've got one troop. And this area produces silver. And how do I get that silver that my little region supports? by spending these military tokens. This is one of several actions I can do anytime I want on my turn. I could spend this military token to give myself temporary access to some silver if I need it for whatever I'm trying to do. Uh, and so that's one of many uses for these. These things also I can spend them whenever I want to take my troops and move them around. So if I needed access to stone, I could spend one to move this little fella over here and then two to give myself immediate access to stone as an example. So these military, and there's more that those military tokens can do as well. They're a big deal. And that's why I was glad to get a couple more by climbing all the way up here. So anyway, uh, back to these two cards. I can get the discount on either of them to pay five or four. Although this one would also cost me, um, you know, one of my access to get temporary access to the silver I need. Why do I do them? Well, they give me different immediate benefits. This one says, hey, immediately play another card. And I'd still have to pay, but it's like I get to do another card play action. That's nice. Which means, hey, I could play this one and then immediately play that one. Um, and then again, I'd have to pay, but I'd have the discount and all that. At which point, I'd get to do this special benefit. Now, there's a problem with this special benefit. This special benefit is immediately tuck a card um, under the uh, you know under my. Uh, what do you call it? Under my thing. So that I get that power for the rest of the game and I don't have to suffer any penalties. And that's kind of a waste because here's the deal. If I play this and then, um, you know, this will be out in play and when you play a card, it just stays out here as a reminder that you did the one-time benefit. But this card, it's a reminder that you paid seven to get this card played. Eventually, later on, at the end of the round, at the end of every round, we have the opportunity to transfer cards over here and tuck them. But normally, to do that, we have to sacrifice victory points equal. So that basically, at the end of the game, this will give me four, but I'll lose four to transfer it over. Now, that's if I transfer cards at the end of the round directly from my hand. I lose points. If I have first spent money to put them into play, and then later on I transfer them, however I trigger it, I don't have to suffer that penalty. Here's the problem. Um, this thing says, hey, transfer without suffering the penalty. I, if I play this and then play this, I'll get to transfer. That's nice. But I won't get the benefit of not suffering the penalty. So, now on the other hand, I could just say, hey, you know what? I'm going to go on ahead and um, play this card. And it'll cost me five. It'll uh, be worth three at the end of the game if I ever get into the uh, 
into the whatchamacallit. But I will immediately do this, which says, hey, immediately tuck something. I would then tuck this. Normally, tucking directly from my hand would lose me four points, but this says don't lose anything, and I'll give myself access to this power immediately. I'll lose that power, but I'll get this power, which says, hey, make two coins whenever you draw, whenever you play a one or a two. Now, the problem is, I didn't play any ones or twos. But I do like the idea of getting this thing into a situation where I've got more ones and twos. So am I going to do that? I think I am. I think that's what I'm going to do. All right. So remember, folks, sorry. Uh, this is a lot going on, all because I'm doing this one action here. For one action, I can play one card. It is going to be this card. And remember, this card costs me eight coins, minus three if I've got some silver. So I will kick my unit into gear with a weaponry token to get myself some silver. So that means I only owe five coins of my starting 15, and I have played this card. I put it over here with a reminder that, hey, if I ever tuck this, I don't have to lose the point. So this is worth three points if I get it tucked later. But for now, I did this, and that says tuck something um, directly and don't lose the points. So I'm going to tuck this and get this power immediately, and I didn't have to lose any points for it. Okay. Phew. That was a lot. Um, and that was just my first of four actions. Yikes. Okay, so that was it. Now I've got two special powers. Now here's the problem. Uh, there is this goal for getting three special powers of the same type. And by the way, if we were playing at a higher player count, there'd be a first, second, and third. In a two-player game, there's only first and third. Um, anyway, though, so I, these are not the same. But remember, my other one, and the other reason I kept this in my hand is, it's another one that rewards me for going to wilds. I want to get this thing tucked because then I'll have two of the three matching tucked powers to unlock that bonus. So um, I've got this in play, but I'd like to tuck it and still get the three points, which is why I paid money to get into play. Phew, that was a big development. It is now Jen's turn. Jen looks for her highest value die, which is this one. Okay, so Jen is going to do this, right? Um, and... Two things. She can move up on any track she wants, and she can do four deployment actions. So, um, which does she want to move up on? If she does the... Yeah, remember. Oh, that's right. Yes. Wait a minute. What the heck? Wasn't Jen planning on going and building? Oh, I'm, I'm, I've totally forgotten. I've got, I'm not going to be... All right, so Jen's moving up on anything. She could start chasing after me. And oh, this is a tough choice. She moves up this. This makes her building more powerful, but she's not building yet. She's not going to be building this round. So instead of pushing that... And she has a power that lets her climb up this track anyway. Oh, but that's right. Um, Yeah, she wanted to push this up to make this more powerful because then later on when she comes over here she will push up again and she'll get to do a build. So it does make sense. Because her other option is to move up this. Get herself two more troops because she's about to do four movement and having more troops. But nope, she's going to stick to her original plan now that I've remembered it. She's moved up here. She has upgraded her special ability. She now gets an extra powerful discount bonus when she builds. Okay, and she could go up one more time eventually. So worry about that later. So that was moving up and now she's got four... Um, expansion points to spend. And those points can be spent either getting your troops from your board onto the main map wherever you've got a city, and ultimately you can have up to three cities, or moving ones you've already got to adjacent spaces. So first of all, Jen's got four. Here is one, right? Here is two, all right? And then I think Jen is going to spread out with her other two. She's going to move two of these out. And she needs to be thinking about what she can move to adjacent spots. Where does she want to go? If she moves over here, this gives her temporary access to wood, lumber, but she's already got lumber. She wants to get access to more stuff. So she'll move one here and one here. So now Jen has majority presence in three regions on the board, which will score big at the midway point of the game if she can hold on to those majorities. Plus, she's also got um, extra um, access to food and to stone. And she's going to need that stone for building. She doesn't need that food for building, though, does she? Oh, if she could move one more, she could have gotten over here to get extra. No, but she already has. Right. I think she's fine with that. She's fine with that. Is she? Is she? Yeah, maybe she is. I think so. Okay. That's cool. All right. So Jen has um, moved up once on the track, and she has done four movement. Now it is my turn. I've got to do my next highest value die, which is going to be this one. 
All righty. And so I am doing this, which is that in this game, the power is, hey, draw an extra card. Yay, I've got an extra card, so I can play more cards. What is it? It is, uh, it requires lumber to get the discount, and it immediately gives me two more military axes. And if I tuck it, it gives me a bonus if I draft fives or sixes. So then I'd be getting bonuses if I draft ones, twos, and five sixes. Or I shouldn't say draft, I should say play. It's when you play them. All right, so this just went into my hand uh, because I did that. And now I can do one action on any of the four. All righty, what do I want to do? But wait, wait, wait. Before I do that, remember, I just did a wild. So I'm activating this, and that is giving me another one of these. And actually, before I go on, let's talk about all the actions I can do using these, right? It's, um, all, where is it? Okay, here's a breakdown of the standard actions, you know, the uh, the planning and the developing and the building and the wild and all of that. Here's some restrictions for how you build buildings, which Jen is about to do. Um, on the other side, e e these are all the extra actions we can do. You can do these anytime in your turn, before your main action, after your main action, or even in the middle of doing a main action, which is pretty unique. Most games don't let you mix and match like that. Um, you can only do any one of these once per turn though. So this is spend axes to move your troops around, spend axes to get the resource where your troop is, um, use these bonuses which you earn by working, these are trade good bonuses which we haven't gotten any of those yet, discard any number of cards for a silver, so basically your cards are multi-use, you can discard them um, to get extra silver to play other cards or build or whatever it might be. Uh, exchange three temporary goods to turn them into a permanent good or um, get pull one of your units off the board, back to your own board, and spend the appropriate amount of axes to fight the sea people. So Jen can fight this sea person if she's got four axes to spend. She can fight this one if she's got three axes to spend. What would happen if she has this one fight these sea people? she would get three more cards. So she could get a bigger and bigger hand, which would be very, very handy. But on the other hand, this would come off the board and she'd lose access to food. But that might make sense for her um, because she already has food over here. She doesn't need more access to that food necessarily. So, yowza. You can see, folks, things are really starting to uh, get big. Anyway, I've got to pick any one of the actions. Um, do I want to do this? Do I just want to play another card um, but this one needs lumber. I don't have access to lumber. I don't have uh, military access to lumber. So I don't think I want to play this card necessarily. So I'm not, I'm not playing cards. I could go on ahead and draw another card. I could be the first to build. Or uh, I could do a single move. Because currently, I'm not doing any movement. I could get another one of my people on the board or move one of my existing ones around without having to burn through my precious um, axes. And this is where things get interesting. Before I do whatever my main action is, I can say, hey, you know what? I'm going to spend an axe to move this person over here. Then I've got access to lumber. Then I could say my action will be... So I, instead of spending three coins of the eight I need to spend, I spent um, five coins and one... Uh, whatchamacallit? Uh, I can't think of the word. Uh, you know, axe to get to the lumber that's over there. Oh, shoot, folks. I forgot, by the way. Always watch with the Klingon subtitles turned on because I've already made a goof. I might have made a few goofs here, but here's a big one. I talked about Jen's special power of being able to build. My special power is I get a $1 discount every time I play a card. So when I played the card over here, it cost me one less coin. I've got one more coin. So doing that little trick I just talked about makes sense because I could be taking more advantage of my special power. So... Let's do it. Um, before I do my main wild action, I am going to spend one of these to move somebody over here. Now I've got access to lumber. I've lost my access to silver. Uh, then my one action is going to be to play this card. It is eight minus lumber. I don't have lumber, but I'll use this to get temporary access to that lumber. Right, so it's five minus one is four. So it only costs me four to play this card. And now I've got this and that says, hey, get two military back. So now, at the end of my turn, I'm going to get to tuck a card. If I tuck either of these to get either of these powers, I don't have to lose the points. So I'm setting myself up. And I'm definitely going to tuck this because I'm racing to get three of a kind matched. One of the things I need to keep an eye out for is getting more cards. I didn't bother coming over here because none of the cards I could have drafted would have given me my third instance of this so I could have claimed that. I'm waiting for Jen to draw some, get them out of the way, so that hopefully the one I want comes up in round two. Anyway, though. That was um, my second turn. Geez, even though it was only just one thing, with some bonus actions, turns can get pretty big. Now it is time for Jen's second turn. And Jen has two fours. 
So she could do this one or she could do that one. It's her choice. She, but she's going to do one, then she's going to do the other, then that's going to be her last action. So what does she want to do? I think she'll just get this one done right now, which is, uh, all right, so she's playing that four. This says, hey, do whatever this is, and this is draw. Um, uh, yeah, th this symbol is draw one card from the current active deck. So Jen just got herself a third card. And then she has got this action, which you will notice looks a little bit different. It's not a stack of cards. Th since it's not a stack of cards, Jen has a choice. For these two cards that she could grab, she could either draw them blind still or take any of these. And just like me, Jen is looking. Are there any that match? Yes, there is. She has a 5-6. This is a 5-6. And Jen can see, hey, I need to get three matching special powers. So Jen, of her two things she's going to take, she's going to take this one. And she could draw blind. She could take another one. These aren't going to refill till the end of her turn. Um, oh, this one matches her thing as well. So she's now she's got two different avenues to try to pursue this agenda. So Jen has just taken two cards plus a third one because that was the power in this game. And let's not forget, Jen also did this action. So either before or after the action, she could trash three cards and move up one. Jen's going to trash three cards now and move up further, which is going to give her a build. So she kind of want to keeep this. She want, kind of want to keep all of these because these have the potential to let her get over there. So, but she has to get rid of three. So she'll get rid of both of these. This one lets her get another wild, you know, universal resource. So that's pretty nice. But it doesn't match. Oh, and she's gonna. She knows I'm gonna be pissed when uh, she gets rid of that because that's what I'm looking for. So there's two of the three she's getting rid of. She's got to get rid of one more. Urgh. All right, so she needs to think about what power does she like. This would let her immediately tuck something. This would let her immediately move somebody around on the board. Not quite as good. That's why it costs less and is worth more points. This one would give her two more axes, which is nice. And then the special powers, whenever you activate a five or six, get any temporary resource you want. Whenever you do the um, draw cards, trash two. And... Um, move up a space on your worst progress track. So if Jen has this, then whenever she does these, she could activate both of these, trash five cards, move up on yellow, and up on her weakest track. So she could really start screaming up those tracks. Oh my gosh, she's got to get rid of one more. Okay, you know what? Another reason for Jen to have taken these five sixes is because she can see I've got a five six over here. She didn't want me to get access to that five six either in case I would maybe turn them in. So she's going to stick to her original plan. We get rid of one of these. She'll get rid of that one. So she just got trash three cards, which means she takes another step up and means she immediately builds. Even though nobody came here this turn, Jen gets to build now. So how does building work? I'm glad you asked. Let's take a look. Uh, you can build um, on the board usually, well, it depends on what you're building. Um, it, you can build a, another building or another um, city in a space where you've got troops and you get a discount if you've got stone. Jen doesn't have stone, but she does have access to stone if she uses her military. So she could build her second city. Right. And her second city will get her one point plus what, where, you know, wherever she builds. If she builds here, that's two more coins and she'd get to draw another card. So she could build another city. Um, or she could build a tower. Now, a tower can only go where a city exists. Towers are cheaper. They cost three. But hey, it'd be free if she has access to copper, which she does have access to in her home region if she spends a coin. So she could build a tower for free. That would get her the axe back plus another card. And remember, it looks like Jen's setting herself up to be able to want to have lots of cards to keep trashing them to push her progress. So that makes sense. Let's have her build one of these. Okay, so, uh, and remember, or, 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 wait a second. There's two more things she could build. She could build a ship. This would cost her, her first ship would cost her three, and then six, and then nine. They're worth more points the more she builds. Uh, she gets a $3 disc point discount if she's got access to lumber. And she does. So her first ship would actually be free to build. And then she would be able to put it on one of these three trade routes that we've got over here. 
And these are randomly chosen. As Par said, we can see there's different things on each side. So Jen could get on a trade route, which uh, means she'd start earning more axes, more um, weaponry at the end of every round. That's a little sign for end of round. It would cost her a coin to get on there. Although if she's got herbs, which she does, she'd be able to avoid having to spend that. So she could get this ship and then get an income of axes for the rest of the game. Or she could get on this one and get another income of cards for the rest of the game. Or this one and an income of points for the rest of the game. So that's if she builds a ship. Now, alternatively, uh, there's one more thing she could choose to build she could build a farm. And so farms, uh, which uh, mean you have to take your workers off the board and it gets progressively harder to build farms. But if you've got food that um, you know softens the blow so it doesn't cost as much, farms generate points for you throughout the game. Plus, they are a way to get more points, more money, and push up on your pop more farms you got, the higher you are in your population track, and boom, 14 points. So they're going to be a big source of points and income for the rest of the game. Jen is building one thing. What is it going to be? Um, because she wants more cards, because she's setting herself up for trashing a lot of cards, I think her one build is going to be to build a ship. It would cost three coins. She's got the permanent wood, so that's a three discount, so it doesn't cost her anything to build it. Um, and she puts it on one of these tracks, and you no, she's going to put it over here and because uh, it doesn't cost anything. So it would have cost one or two to put on that one. This one doesn't cost anything. So she doesn't even have to give up her temporary herbs. She'd be able to use that to move up higher on this track later and get to where she's getting more card income. So Jen just did that. That was her one build and it was totally free because of her permanent resources. And that's going to feed her give me more cards strategy for the rest of the game. Okay, cool. So all that happened because she made it up there. Yowza! Okay, now it is my third turn. I have a four and a three. That means I have to do this one first. And this says, hey, just do two actions of anything I want. So I could build twice. I could play cards twice. I could draw cards twice. Or I could do troop movement twice. My choice. But before I do remember, that's a wild. What do I get for doing wilds? I get extra ones of these. So I could get access to more stuff, etc., etc. And you know what? Since I have got so many, um, I've got so many of these so quick. I thought, I mean, the more troops I have on the board, the more I can make use of these for bonus actions. So I think my double action is going to be expand. Do even though I didn't come here, I'm going to expand. So I'm going to take two. Um, it, you know, those expands are either move an existing one around or put new ones on the board. I'm just going to put two on the board. And then anytime I want, I can use these to move them around and and or use them to fight the the the, the sea people and stuff like that. All right, so that was a, that, hey, for once, that was a quick and easy turn. Yay. It is now Jen's turn. It is time for Jen, if she wants to, to do six um, expansion actions. And I don't know if Jen wants to, in all honesty. I mean, she could. She could go one, and then two, three, four. I mean, she can move up. She's only got four troops. She hasn't collected any because she didn't come over here. So now, if she doesn't want to, she could instead just make two po two coins so she has more money to do more stuff later. But don't forget, um, before she decides to either get two coins or do six expansion actions, she's got her bonus actions, and she does have some stuff. Will any of these help her make her decision? And I think it will, because remember, before Jen does her main thing, once per turn you can do these. Jen is going to call one of her troops back home by having them fight the sea people. All righty. Remember, Jen moved over here before. She is going to have this one come on home because they led in battle. She needed to spend all of her axes, but she was able to defeat these sea people. And what does that give her? Three more cards. But folks, if you look closely, you'll notice. So far, we've only been playing in the shallow end of the pool, the first era cards. These are red. Jen gets a one, a two, three, you don't get these till um, till the second half of the game, but Jen just got them way early. More powerful, more points, and much more expensive. But now Jen's got a bunch of interesting choices uh, for trying to develop those things. So anyway, and now there are some tougher sea people waiting to be fought there as well. So Jen just did that as one of her extra actions. She can't do it again, even if she wanted. But now that she's got two layabouts, it makes more sense to do six. So she'll, in the second coin, she'll do two actions, she'll, six actions. One, two, three, f 
three. Um, where else is he going to go? Four. Five. I'm just thinking about, um, you know, where is she? I mean, these are easy to fight. She's trying to ensure she has access to all the resources. She already has wood. So getting into either of those resources. But getting up there does make sense. Um, right. Oh, hold on a second. Ugh. She doesn't need this food because she's got that. She needs to get up there to get into my silver. So, okay, she'll just go one more. Six. And now Jen has moved into my territory. And now I should say, folks, the uh, the rules... Actually, one of the things I love about the rules is throughout, they have all these little um, thematic moments where they talk about the real history of what we know of the Minoan culture. And one of the main things is this was a largely peaceful society. Um, and no point in this game can players ever attack each other, steal from each other, or anything. One of the reasons I was so excited to play a civilization building game where it's live and let live. So... Um, what will happen at the end of the second of four rounds is uh, whoever has the majority of troops in a given area gets the domination bonus, but there's a second place for being present. Plus, by Jen coming over here, she could build a farm in my backyard before I get a chance to. Plus, she's given herself access to silver. So now she's got access to copper, stone, food, which she doesn't need, um, silver. So she needs to get another one over there. Uh, but she does. She has no more access, so she can't get over there. But anyway, so that was it. Jen just did her big spread across the world, get a bunch of cards in hand. And now it is my last turn of the first round. And this one says, hey, play three cards. I have no cards. Remember, I came over here not so much about playing the cards, but ensuring I could bump myself and keep Jen out of there uh, so I could move up on the track more. So I have no cards to play. So instead of that, I'm just going to get two coins as the uh, fallback position. Not great, but say la vie. And now Jen's final turn, Je this section says, hey, um, well, first of all, because she's coming here, she could trash three cards to move up on the yellow, which she's going to do. But she can do that before or after. This says she has four actions to spend. Oh, whoops. This should have been refilled as soon as Jen's turn was over. I forgot about that. Sorry. So Jen has four actions. Those actions can be either to draw blind, draw any of these, or one time draw from the super deck, which normally we'd always be about. Whoever gets here gets early access to super cards, but Jen, she already got access to her super cards. So I think Jen is just going to use all four actions. Plus, another thing, she gets a coin and a, uh, a weaponry, which means now she could use that weaponry to move stuff around, but she doesn't need to. She could do that later if she needs to get to um, you know whatever it might be. So anyway, so, um, Jen is just going to either draw four from here or four blind or some combination thereof. And remember, Jen is looking, right? She's got her, no, that's it. She has her three um, develop powers. One of them is going to be, they're both expensive, eight and eight, um, but there are discounts to be had for them. So Jen does not need to go digging for more of these. She needs to get these played so that she will have finished that objective. So then really what she wants to do, well, she'd like to keep me from doing it. So if there are any wilds or one twos, she'd probably take those to keep them away from me. There aren't any. So I think she's gonna draw a blind for four. One, two, three, four. And now normally she'd probably spend a bit more time thinking about these. Hey, what do I get discounts and all that? But remember, most of these are gonna get trashed with her special powers anyway. So she just did a quick four and that was it. Okay, folks, yowza. So we have finished, those are all of our actions. Um, and we have finished the action part. Now we do some income and cleanup and then Jen becomes the first player going into the next round. Income is we look for the open hand. So first of all, I get four bucks, Jen gets four bucks and a point, boop. And we each get four, so a five and one in change, a five and one in change. So we both have that. Jen, meanwhile, is over here. This says, hey, draw another card. So Jen gets another card. I don't get anything from that stuff. It's actually nice. On the other side of this is the very high. So we looked at our player boards. I got that and nothing else. So I believe there's one of the special powers that gives you income on the side too, but that's it. And I haven't built anything that would be uh, giving me income, have I? Nope. So that was it. And then our trade routes. Jen's on one trade route, so she got that. Then our progress tracks. So we're both over here. Both of us, we didn't go up higher, so both of us get to tuck one card. Now me, I'm going to tuck one of these two. 
And because I already paid money to get them into play, I'm not going to lose points. So which of these do I want to tuck? Do I want to tuck? Uh, do I want to get this power or this power? Oh, I want to get that power, please. So I will tuck that. And now I've got two of the three I need. Plus, every time I go to these wild spots, I get a coin and a, uh, and a, a, a weaponry. So that's the one I tucked. Jen gets to tuck one as well. She's got about 50,000 cards to tuck. And what I'm thinking is, oh my gosh, she has three different eyeball cards. She only needs to get two of these tucked to get that. So she's probably going to tuck one of these. But remember, since she's tucking them from her hand, she's going to lose the points. And if she didn't have enough points, she wouldn't be able to tuck. Now, if she tucks this one, she only loses two points. Although this gives her the opportunity to do another tuck if she plays eight bucks. If she tucks this one, she loses five points. But let's see, this one is trash two cards to... All right, so they're both the same power. If she uh, does this one, uh, she'll lose three points. And hey, this is a different power. Instead of trashing cards, how about get some money every time you go there? I think Jen wants some variety. This is the free one she's going to tuck. Because it's coming from her hand instead of something she's played, uh, it costs her. She loses three victory points. And now at the end of the game, she'll score those three victory points back, but it's basically like you did, it broke even. So Jen just lost one, two, three points. Uh, but now we're both... Uh, there, but the difference is I do not have my third card. Jen does, so she's probably going to win that thing. All right. Anyway, so we both done that income. Coming over here, what's our income? Uh, nothing. There's no income on the infrastructure track. These are all just insta bonuses. But then we come over here, and what's our income? Jen gets um one uh weaponry. I get two because I'm higher up. So I've got even more ways to manipulate my troops, and Jen only gets one. And now there's another thing as well. This is a reminder of how many points you get for dominance versus presence in a given zone. It's three points for dominance, one point for presence. But when we eventually resolve this at the end of the second round, uh, since I'm on the higher level, I'll get four points for dominance and two points for precedence. So um, I've got a lot of things. I can move my guys around. I've got more to deploy, etc., etc. So that's obviously the direction I'm going. So that was that. And then um, if anybody had the special ability, we don't have it. Then um, we go on to round two. Jen becomes the first player. And if we were finishing the second round, we would do a bunch of scoring. And then the uh, early cards would get replaced with souped up super cards. And if we were at the end of the fourth round, we would, uh, if there were any C people left on the board that hadn't been fought, we could fight them. And then we go to uh, final scoring. Okay. So folks, I'm just getting started. That was just one of four rounds, but hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea of the overall flow of Minos. And uh, if you'd like to hear some final thoughts from me and Jen, you can go to the final, you can hit that eye on the top of the screen and follow the show notes. Or if you'd like to watch a second round and maybe some of the third round as well, you can go to the extended play where I'll be demonstrating how it works as a solo mode. It won't be me against Jen. It'll be me against Rodamanthus. So it'll be Rado versus Arada. And if you want to check that out, again, links down in the show notes or hit that eye in the top right corner of the screen. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.